Hello everyone, this is Varsha and welcome to Programming Knowledge. So in today's tutorial, we will understand what is the difference between Git Kraken and GitHub. Now, uh, in the previous tutorial, I explained about the Git Kraken. I also showed some of the installation process about Git Kraken. And there were a lot of comments asking that, is there any difference between the Git Kraken and GitHub? So today I'll be explaining you the difference between both these terms. Also, we will categorize some of the Git commands so that it's easier to learn. Also, we're going to learn the new Git command that is the Git diff command. And how is it used and what is it all about? We're going to learn that. So let's get started. So the first thing comes is what is the difference between the Git Kraken and GitHub? See, basically GitHub and Git Kraken both are different. They are not the same. And GitHub can be classified as a tool like it is a code collaboration tool and also it has the version control. Now I have explained what is version control before in the previous tutorials. If you haven't seen those tutorials, you can go back and see those tutorials. Also uh, code collaboration means you can collaborate your code on GitHub whereas Git Kraken, it is a source code management. It manages your source code. It shows the pictorial representation about the git pull, the git uh, push commands. So basically, uh, it manages the source code. It shows the git commands, the issues, the push commands and everything in a pictorial form. So that is what git kraken is. And GitHub is open source, but Git Kraken is not open source. It's not free. GitHub is free. You can host your websites for free, whereas on Git Kraken, you cannot. And yes, of course, there are a lot of companies which use GitHub. That is the Netflix, Udemy and many other thousand leading companies use GitHub. Whereas Git Kraken is used in companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon. These are some of the leading companies which use the Git Kraken developer tools. So this is the basic difference about the Git Kraken and GitHub. Okay, so to summarize, first thing to control your code, you can use Git. There are other methods also to control your code, but we can use Git. Now to host your code, you can use GitHub, you can use GitLab, you can use Bitbucket. Now we choose GitHub. Now to get a Git GUI so that you can work easily. Now what happens here, we write the git commands like git push and git pull commands. Whereas if you want to push your uh, project, just by one single click, you use the GUI, that is the graphical user interface. For that, you have the Git Kraken and the GitHub desktop. Okay, so mostly GitHub is mostly used and it is the most used tool by many of the users. So we're going to use the GitHub. Now understanding the git diff command. So before that, let's categorize some of the git commands that we have learned previously into different categories so that it's easier for us to learn. Now to know the categorization, what I did is simply just go on knowunite.com and here I have given the entire categorization of all the git commands. I will attach the link in the description box below. So this is the git commands over here. So if you click on git commands and here you can see the different git commands. See. As and long we go on uh, learning some of the commands, I will keep updating this sheet. But for now, I have given the git configuration commands. There are some of the two git configuration commands that is mostly used. I have done those git configuration commands. I have explained about it in the previous tutorial. You can have a look at that. Also, we're going to see what are the day to work commands? What is the starting a project commands? What are the different types of commands so that it's easier for us to learn? Once we differentiate these commands, we categorize. So once we categorize these commands, it's way easier for us to understand that which command is used where. Like your day to work commands is that when you are a software developer in a company, you frequently use git status command because you want to know what is the status of the working directory at that point of time. So these are some of the commands that day to work commands, which you should know as a fresher as well as as an experienced person. So these are some of the commands that I have categorized. Apart from this, also I have given some of the common interview questions that is basically asked in many of the interviews. If you are a fresher, I have given some basic interview questions which you should know even as a fresher. So these are some of the questions and these questions are of course not the only questions. I'll keep updating these uh, questions more. Uh, these questions are divided into basic, intermediary and hard questions. So if you are a fresher, go for the basic one. And if you want me to discuss all the answers of these questions, please write down in the comment section that uh, 
discuss the answers of these questions also uh, you can search it on internet anywhere you will find it and these questions are very common and they are mostly asked in many of the interviews and it's also basic requirement see if you are really good at git github and handling those projects and version control system it is always an advantageous part for you in interviews so i have designed a basic interview questions and these questions are very basic i will keep updating the sheet as we learn new commands about git so these are the different uh, questions that is based on the commands that we have learned till now like we have six six videos till now and these are the commands that were used in all the videos and these are the questions on those commands so if you have any doubts regarding any of the question you can comment down so that i can answer you and i will definitely reach you out i will attach both these links in the description box below and it will be way easier for you so uh, today as i showed you those git commands first we are going to go with the day to work commands we know what is git status is we know what is git add command if you don't know you can go back to the previous tutorial and watch it you know what is git commit now we don't know what is git diff and what is this git diff stage what is this git diff head so we're going to understand this git diff command more properly in the coming videos okay so uh, now this is the github repository uh, that i have created that is a test repo repository that i have created already over here in my github account now what i'll do is i'll go on my f drive and i have created a folder i've named it as git repo here i will just right click and you have an option of open hyper here now if you don't know what hyper is and why i have installed this i have explained everything about the hyper in the previous tutorial you can go and check it out there and if you're facing any installation problems you can reach me out on the comment sections first thing is that we're going to create a file so how do we create a file we write touch file one dot txt and there you have created a file over here in your git repo folder okay so after creating a file what is this command that we write we have done this many times in the previous tutorial so that is git status so now the status of the working directory so here it says it's not a git repository for now so here once we have created a file we have seen it's a git status is not a git repository we need to turn it to a git repository for that we write git in it and here it says that initialize git empty repository it's it has initialized the git empty repository over here and here if i write git status again i can see there are untracked files over here so to turn it to track what i do is git add and here i will add all the files to track and then let's see its git status and here it sees that the files are tracked okay so still now there were no information in the file that we have created this is the file that we have created and there is no information over here okay nothing we have written so let's use the git diff command now you must be thinking what is this diff command okay now let me tell you diff command is basically is basically used to track the difference it is used to track the difference between the working directory and the staging area so the diff command is basically used to track the differences between or the changes made on a file that is the difference between the working directory and the staging area okay so this is what diff command is used for it is used to track the changes so how it is going to track the changes we're going to see that so for now uh, understand that here this is the uh, git repo folder that we have and the file one is the file that we have created and there is no such information over here in the file one so now what happens if i write git diff and file one dot txt what it says it says nothing okay now if i write something for example if i write hello my name is varsha and i will save this now if i write git div file1.txt and if i press enter there you see i have some of the entries over here i have so i have got something written over here that is the diff git a file1.txt b file1.txt and some of the index numbers and minus minus plus and a lot of numbers and everything over here what is all this we're going to learn what is all this okay so this was the entire different statements that we got after running the git diff command the first thing 
So the first thing we saw was the git diff a demo.txt b demo.txt this demo is the file name here you can it, it can be file one.txt or a.txt or b.txt or anything okay the demo is the file name so here it's written a demo.txt and b demo.txt what is this a and b over here and what are these index numbers we're going to learn all this so the first command is that diff git a demo.txt and b demo.txt a is basically the source, the source area, that is the staging area. B is the destination, that is the working directory. As I said, the diff command is used to track the difference between the changes made on a file, that is the difference between the working directory and the staging area. So there needs to be a staging area as well as the working directory, right? So that is the reason why here it is written A, that is the source, the source file that is the staging area b that is the destination file the working directory now if you don't know what is staging area and the working directory i had explained that in the previous tutorial go back to those tutorials and please watch it out but still i'll tell you uh, what is this working directory the working directory is where your file is so if i write git add command it goes to the staging area so we are going to know the difference between these files. What is the difference between the files? Whatever data we have given over here in the file, it is there in the staging area or it is not there in the staging area. This is what we're going to learn today. So git diff a demo.txt, that is the source, the staging area, b, that is the destination, the working directory. Now the second statement that we could see is that index and there were some numbers over here. Okay, there were a lot of numbers. Now, since I said git diff commanders used to track the difference, there needs to be a source file that is a staging and the destination file, right? For that, there needs to be some address or some index number fetching out that source files and the destination files. Like in C++, we have pointers that stores the address of some variable, right? Similarly, over here, we have hash files. We have hash of file contents. These are some hash values that are used that is used to store the file content. So basically the first hash value that we have that stores the file content from source or staging area. And the second hash value that we are having, this hash value stores the file content from the destination area. That is the, uh, that is the working directory. Coming to the third one, what is this number? Now see. 100 is the file type. Here we have the .txt type. Okay, we had created file 1.txt. Now if we have with a Python file, we have a HTML file, we have different different files. For different file, we have different file modes. So for txt, 100 is used. Now after txt, this after this 100, we have 644. Now these are basically the file permissions that are given over here. Now you must be thinking, what is this file permissions? Now see, I would like to share a document to you. Uh, I have seen this document where we have the Linux file permissions over, given over here. I will, if you want, I will give the uh, link in the description box below. So basically, these are the permissions. Now, when you have a file, when you having a file, obviously you are in a company, you want some rights given to a employer who is at the middle level. And some of the uh, and some of the permissions given to the employee was at the lower level. Like for example, if you are the owner of a particular file, you can read, write, execute. You can update the file, delete the file. Whereas someone who is in a group of like middle level, who is in a senior manager or something, and there you can give permissions like you can only update, you cannot delete the file. Whereas who is someone at the lower uh, level, they can only read the data. They cannot write the data or update the data or delete the file. So these are different file permissions that you can give as a user to different different group of people. So here there are basically three groups. That is the user, group and all. Okay, so the user is basically the owner. Group are the group of people like managers, there are some higher level people all grouped together. And all means basically they are group of managers and also the employees. So here, these are three basic groups. So for three basic groups, we give three numbers. Okay, so what are these numbers there? If you have seen, it was written 644. Here it's written 644. So here it's written 644. So what is this? Basically, this 6 means, wait, let me tell you, 6 means read and write. So basically, the user, the owner is having the read and write operation. 
Now coming to 4 and 4. What is this 4 and 4? 4 basically means only read. That is all the users and all the group of people who are at the senior level, also the users who are at the lower level are having the uh, permission to only read the data. They cannot write the data or execute the data or anything. There are no permissions given except the read the data. So this is a permission file. So this is a permission uh, table that I can see over here. And these are different symbols that is basically used to represent them. For execute, we write X. For we write W. For execute plus write, we write WX. So these are different symbols. I will give the link in the description box so it's easier for you to understand. Okay, so now the third command was, there was some three dashes and a demo.txt. Now you know, now you know what is this demo.txt, right? This demo.txt is the source file, that is a staging area file. Now why is this minus minus over here? Now see, basically this means that, I will show the uh, representation of this. This is the working directory or the destination file that is the b.demo.txt and this is a staging area. Here I had written hello I am Varsha. Did I write a command git add after it? No, right? I did not add. So I did not add it to the staging area. So this is the difference between the two files and this is what it is showing that hello I am Varsha that is there in the working directory but it is not added in the staging area. So here when it says minus minus a it says there are some source files that is missing. Okay whereas when it says b demo.txt that means some new lines are added in the destination file but it is not there in the staging area this is what this basic command means that minus minus a demo.txt that demo is the file name whereas this minus minus means there are some files are missing whereas plus plus means new lines are added in the destination file and it is not there in the staging area this is what the difference is between the minus and the plus over here now after this you had seen some numbers that is the minus zero and plus one so basically this minus zero says that there are, in the source file there are no lines are present whereas in the destination file there is one line added and what is that one line that is hello my name is Varsha. Now before this line you can see there is a plus sign. This means that some lines are added to the destination file or the working directory. Now if there is minus over here that means some lines are removed from the destination files. And if there is nothing, there is a simple space over there, that means some files are, these files are unchanged. There is no uh, lines added and there are no lines removed from it. So this is, is what is the basic meaning of the five lines that you could see. Now, uh, going to the pictorial representation is that we had a working directory which said that uh, hello i am varsha whereas in the staging area there was whereas in the staging area it was not added because i did not write git add over here so this is basic pictorial representation of it now you can try this out and you, if you have any doubts about this uh, you can always reach me out on the comment section i will definitely answer you out this is all for this video now and we're going to learn about the different diff commands uh, in the next video thank you